Hello and welcome. My name's Leanne. I live in Australia and this is my crafty cupboard. Here is a requested tutorial start to finish on how I make Sakura Hexes. First of all to get started you need to download a template to use for your design unless you want to hand draw it um, and I'm using this website where you can see lots of Japanese family crests. So the one I'm using today is this one, it's the Musubi Sakura, um, little heart shaped petals forming the knotted cherry blossom flower pattern. So Musubi means knot and Sakura is the cherry blossom. You can see where it's black, I'm going to be colouring that in. Just showing you as I scroll down here that there's others, lots of others that you could choose from. And you want to use a fairly simple design for this. Um, and again, wherever you're seeing black, that's the bits that you would colour in on your piece with the pen. And where you see the white outline, that's where you'll do some chain stitching around the edges to make it look like an applique. So this is the download button here. You just click here to download the image um, that you you want to use and then put it on a Word document or something like that and resize it to the right size. I'm using mine at eight centimeters. Okay, I'm I'll using the Zig Fabric Color. The instructions. It's a fabric marker. And the color is green gray. Comes with two ends, a pen end, and a brush end. So I use whatever end, and depending on what I'm doing, so for outlining, I'm just going to use the pen end. For big areas of coloring, coloring, I go to the brush end. So I've just got it set up on my light box here. Just using this. Now this is permanent. So if you're worried about your tracing, you can go on with a non-permanent marker to start. I was simply going to trace the design on. You don't have a light box. I didn't until recently. You can just tape your design to a window.
Okay. Sorry for the bump, taking the light box away. Now it's time to colour. So this is the applique part. You can see if you just if you just go lightly, it's not very even colour. So you want to go over a fair few times to get a solid colour. That's the brush end. Oh, this is the, the pen end. You can see with the pen end, it comes out thicker faster. But you've got to draw a lot of lines to get your coverage. Now you can see here where the lines intersect. I'm just going to leave a little bit of no colour so that um, I can see where to stitch.
once the cockatoo's flying over. That's the rainbow lorikeet. Um, I'm using a, a woven fabric you don't want to use you want to use a natural fiber it will take the color better when I've tested things on poly cottons and things like that they bleed the pen just bleeds through the fabric a lot okay I'm gonna iron that to set it and I'll be back I'm using DMC Stranded Embroidery Cotton in colour 225 and I've just cut off a length and split the six strands into two. So I'm just using two and I have a size five embroidery needle knotted one end okay so chain stitch all the way around come up hold it with your thumb go in the same spot you came up Take a little stitch guess that's about a quarter of an inch can you see my thread still secured under my thumb now let it go and it's formed a chain for the next stitch go in where the thread came out so go in at the base of your loop Take a little stitch. Again, the thread secured under my thumb. Another chain. So you do this all the way around the outline. I did forget to mention that this piece of fabric I've cut is slightly larger than the finished hexagon. I'm going to make, so this is the template I'm using for the hexagon. Move this out, otherwise you can see it. Quilt as you go two and a half inch hexagon designed by Daisy and Grace. So you can see my fabric's just a bit bigger 
because that will be the final size. You don't have to chain stitch this, you could stem stitch it, back stitch it. I find it much easier to chain stitch not in a hoop. You just have to be careful you don't pull it too tight. Tight enough so the stitches sit firmly but not so that it puckers up the fabric. a little and twist when you get to a corner try and have it so that your loop sits finishing at the corner and then your next one just goes out this way Okay, here I'm getting to a section where this one goes under. Sorry for my growling tummy, I haven't had brekkie yet. So, again, I've got my loop finished there. I'm just going to take a stitch down and re-emerge under. and start the chain stitching again how I started it off before so come in the same hole you came out
now I've done the outside of the heart shape I'm just uh, starting again from the center and working my way around the the inside of the heart shape in the exact same fashion and uh, you'll notice when I get up to the part where the outer petal overlaps again I just take a stitch underneath and re-emerge and start the chain stitch again My thumb let go of the thread so I'm just making sure my needle goes back in it to, to catch that loop to make the chain stitch. It's starting to get a bit fiddly now because um, my thread's getting short. It's probably a good time to stop Leanne and not keep playing thread chicken. Once again we're back to that point so you want to make sure your chain stitch finishes on the point just to give you a nice defined point. It's definitely time to take a stitch on the back and uh, loop it through to tie it off. I just tuck the um, tail through a few more stitches just to secure it and cut it off. shaky table sorry someone vigorously cutting up their breakfast and again <laughs> Anyway, you get the idea now of, of, of chain stitching and so I, I stitch all of the hearts on this piece in the same way, the heart shaped petals to the outside and the inside on each one and um, I'm going to keep stitching this one off camera and I'll come back when it's time to do the circle in the centre. It's getting a bit too shaky. <laughs> See you soon. okay so I'm back I've done all the way around except for the center which I'm about to do just wanted to show you that when I'm not stitching on camera I actually stitch um, with my work raised up on a cushion so that I can sit upright and I'm not hunching over in any way as I'm working um, and it's a nice soft place to rest your hands as well not to mention a handy space to 
put your needle. Um, yeah, so I really recommend doing that. Um, can't do it when I'm on camera though because it brings my hands up too close. And then the camera constantly goes out of focus. All right, so as I mentioned, I've stitched all the way around. I'm about to do the center. Same as we've always done, just come up somewhere. I like to do the center last, so it's sort of sitting on top of the stitches. Um, I think it just gives a little bit of bit of a better look. Sorry if there was a bit of shaking in the previous clip. Um, I've mentioned in other videos, my craft room is actually our dining room, our formal dining room. Um, and sometimes family members like to come and join me and uh, eat their meal <laughs> as I'm stitching away. Um, it's probably one of the reasons I love being in this space. It's uh, central to the home. People walk past it and buy it all the time. And uh, yeah, I like that. That's why sometimes it goes very quiet as well because I'm cutting out their conversation. I do tend to do most of my filming early morning before everyone gets up to try and minimize how much extra noise is going on. Plus, um, that's my favorite part of the day anyway. In the nice quiet of the morning, sitting with a cup of tea, looking out the windows outside. It's a beautiful day for stitching today. It's become autumn at last, and the weather is lovely and cool. And uh, it's a little drizzly. So it's a gorgeous day to be indoors and stitching and just enjoying the cool weather. I can't tell you what a difference it makes. So I just feel so much more relaxed when the weather's cool. I certainly uh, genetically built for a climate below 20 degrees and not one over 40. Okay. So that's uh, all the stitching done. So the next part would be to, I'm just going to tie off, cut the hexagon. Okay, so I've got my cutting mat and my blade, my rotary cutter. And I'm just lining up the hexagon so it visually looks at the same space all the way around. It would have been handy if it had have come with lines through it, marking the center, but that's okay. So long as it sort of looks right to the eye, I think we're good. Because after all, that's how it's going to be as a finished product. No one's going to be getting out anything and measuring it. Okay, so there's our finished hexagon ready to stitch. You also need to cut one of wadding the same size. So I love using my um, offcuts from quilting. That's actually why I started this project in the first place, was to use up those pieces that are cut off the sides of quilts. And now, as well as this you need one hexagon of your backing fabric 
in the bigger piece. And I already have lots of those cut up ready to go, so I'll just get my basket. While I'm looking at my basket, this is what we're making. This is the finished product. Here's one I prepared earlier. So that's the backing piece. So now we just make a little quilt sandwich. And you can use your template to help you. So you put the outer template on and that just lines up the center pieces for you nicely. There we are. So now all we do is fold down once and twice and that will form your perfectly sized hem all the way around and you've got a finished intact quilt as you go hexagon. Now in terms of you could tacking, you could iron this if you wish. I just tend to finger press. You could pin it. I get in a bit of a muddle with pins, but you could pin it so it stays in place. As you stitch. Um, I do tend to prefer to just hold. I have found what is helpful is to do the other side as well. And then that way you're not going to end up pulling this so tight you've left yourself short changed down on this side. Can you see this? This one's a little thicker than that one. So now that I've got this one set. Smooth it all out. I can do this one again. And it'll be a bit more even this time. But yeah, I tend to just hold it firmly with my hand. So next I'm going to show you stitching. Okay, for stitching these down. See these tiny, tiny little stitches in here. You can use ordinary sewing cotton. I like to use this thread. This is um, bottom line. It's very, very fine. And I just use a sort of neutral color. And I'm actually using a beading needle because again, it's very fine. And so that way it'll make nice fine stitches that disappear. You could also use um, a quilting needle and in between her. Okay, so I'm just going to start under here to hide the knot in. I'm not going to start right at the edge because this one will be folded down over it. Okay, so just take a little stitch and then grab right on the The fold the seam and go in directly underneath again little stitch come up in the fold some about a quarter of an inch apart I think I love this. I love hand stitching. I love the minimal amount of equipment. I love that you can sit anywhere. I love that you don't need electricity. I love that there's no noise of a machine. I love how meditative it is. 
just stitching stitch by stitch over and over you can sit and listen to the sounds around you it truly is a wonderful meditation totally living in the moment not worrying about anything else Okay, so I've stopped a little bit short of the edge because now we've got to put this edge in. So again, press it down to meet the edges and then fold over. So now we want to catch this corner. So yes, this is certainly a slow project. It'll be finished when it's finished. <laughs> There's no deadline on this one. It's not for any purpose. It truly is for the joy of making. So you can see the fabric that I found to use this time is much paler than the one I had and so that will be really visually interesting I think in the piece too to have sort of paler and lighter and I'm not sure yet I might even um, do this sort of thing where I've got some facing this way some that way so that both sides of the quilt will be interesting those are all decisions for a later date when I have enough to put together. Because I'd run out of that pink fabric that I had as well. I had used um, like a beige coloured one and so to bring the pink in I've used a darker pink thread when I'm stitching around those ones. I love that this could be you don't even have to do the same in each. My smaller one that I'm making is just all different. All different fabrics. You're just honestly using up the scraps and turning them into something beautiful. not happy with how I caught that corner so I'm just going to grab it again make sure it's right good and keep going now I'm up to this side I'm going to get rid of that pin or I'm going to get my thread caught around it a thousand times And so with this stitching, I am only going through that top layer, a little bit of the wadding maybe, but the top layer, the back layer, I haven't gone through. But you could, and that would make a little quilting pattern on the other side.
Now, it's very nice to have those templates to use uh, if you can't get them or if you don't want to make this size. Of course, you just need a hexagon and then another hexagon that has double your seam allowance around the sides so that you can fold your backing fabric over twice. Oops, starting to get a little slack with where I'm coming up with my needle. See that one there? You can see the stitch. I could go back and undo it, but I'm going to leave it. I think in the scheme of things, no one will notice. Or if they do, it's nice to sometimes see the hand of the maker. Perfection in the imperfection. just each time making sure the points sort of match here see there they don't see there it overlaps looks nicer if they sort of meet so that didn't meet because I've got it too high there let's bring it down try again that's better Oh, by fluke, I'm going to have just enough thread to get to the end, I think. Okay, so now finishing off, I want to do a little stitch. It's hiding underneath. Wrap the threads around three times. Hold it securely, pull it through. Oh no, I've come unthreaded. Let's try that again. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that helped.
and I'm just gonna lose it the tail there you go a finished quilt as you go hexi when you're ready to when you've got enough you'd put them together however you like this way or you can as i mentioned do this way have a different center then basically piece them together and that same stitching we just did you do here to um, piece it together or you could do ladder stitch shall i do one Ladder stitch is where we take a step up each side, but across the seam, it forms the rungs of a ladder. That's really useful for closing seams invisibly. We always use that seam for toy making, bears and the like. Okay, I'm going to lose my knot just in there. You can't see it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is take a little stitch, come back to the corner. So I'm starting right at the corner. So I've got my corners lined up. Okay, so ladder stitch means we come across straight take a stitch in the seam and go straight over can't be at an angle or it won't disappear so take a stitch straight up bring your thread over straight So basically, where I come out, I go in on the other seam, lined up exactly. So that when you're finished, you can't see the stitches on either side. And that's how I'll be joining them together. I'm not going to go all the way because I don't want to join these two pieces together because they're the same pattern. I'll be using all different patterns and as I mentioned, mixing up the different colors so that it looks pleasing. Let's get the third color fabric I have. It's just a linen. So you can see that one I'm using the pink to bring the pink in because it's sort of a beige, beige linen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.